Good afternoon and welcome. We're going to make a start very, very shortly uh, as um, we're just having a few people join us at the last minute. So uh, we'll give it a, another few seconds before we make a start. So just bear with me for a few uh, moments longer. Good afternoon and welcome to the Reckon Electronic Activity Statements Part 2, Creating and Reporting. My name is Anthony Santapoli. Now I've also got a colleague online as well who will be assisting me with the presentation today. Her name is Tanya Dawson. She'll be assisting with the answering of questions. So just to go through today's um, webinar, the first thing I want to kick off uh, with is uh, housekeeping. So I want to make sure that uh, give you the opportunity now to um, let me let us know if you're having any issues about uh, audio. Um, now, if you can't hear me, obviously I'll get you to check your volume control on your computer firstly. Check to make sure that any external speakers are plugged in, and are connected correctly. If that's still not working for you, um, we suggest that you log out of the webinar and log back in. Uh, if not, then, uh, and you're listening to this webinar through a VoIP connection, so through the internet, then we would suggest that you possibly use your telephone instead of your computer, because the audio and video may have something to do with your internet connection. If you're still experiencing any issues, can I suggest that you email tanya.dawson at reckon.com and she will assist you uh, in any way she can. Okay, the session runs for approximately one hour. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please use the questions panel that uh, is part of the GoToWebinar console. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to ask any questions at the, end of each, uh, at the end of each chapter as well as at the end of the webinar. Okay, so just to uh, um, let you know that this session will be recorded and an email will be sent to you in the coming days with a link to this recording. Uh, along with the slides and any other supporting information so that you can download those and uh, go through and watch the webinar again and, and, and go through the notes. Now the webinar question panel will remain open for approximately five minutes after the formal close of today's webinar. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll leave it open for approximately five minutes after the session's concluded because we generally find that there are some questions uh, beyond on the uh, webinar time. Okay, if everything is in order, we shall make a start. The agenda today, obviously challenges and scenarios from a tax agent perspective. So we'll be talking about the prerequisites for bulk generation of activity statements. We'll discuss the steps to update your database and get it ready for the next period, okay, and what the ongoing process would be in order to keep your, up, your database up to date so that uh, as each period rolls around for the activity statements, you're ready to go from that perspective. Process activity statement, or the process around the activity statement creation. So we'll talk about, uh, obviously, once you've received the ATO activity statement reports, um, we'll talk about the manual creation process of those activity statements as well as the new uh, feature of bulk uh, creating the activity statements. Okay? So we have the ability to create those activity statements now in bulk. We're talking about reporting, what ATO reporting is available to us. Um, some of the um, enhancements or some of the functionality around standard reporting within the Reckon APS product as well as the capabilities of the BPA module as well. As usual, we're talking about the hints, tips and traps, 
So talking about the lodgement of amendments and revisions and uh, something you need to be obviously aware of and some of the pitfalls there. The no database reference found message that appears when you run reports and what it means. The ATO activity statement generation dates. The division numbers are now obviously being utilised within the product and, and from the ATO. ELS lodgement using multiple applications and we'll talk about the issues surrounding that as well. Any problem, problem resolution steps that you can follow and requesting the ATO reports. Uh, we'll have a checklist for that as well. Okay, without further ado, let's get stuck into challenges and scenarios. So the prerequisites for bulk um, BAS or IAS um, form creation. So in order to generate um, uh, the or generate the uh, activity statements in bulk, uh, you the, obviously the tax agent uh, needs to ensure that they have received the following reports, and they are the outgoing business activity statement report, being the AB, and the outgoing instalment activity statement report, being the AI. Okay, so these reports obviously contain all the relevant data that the Reckon APS product requires in order to create those activity statements uh, in bulk whether they be in bulk or whether they be in the manual process. Okay. The bulk generation of BAS and IAS are available for both tax elite forms and advanced tax forms. So whether you're an elite user or whether you are an advanced tax user, you can take or make use of the bulk generation process for either of those two applications. What's important if you're um, creating your activity statements in bulk is that you must be running um, the tax release version 2014.04 or higher. Okay, so that is definitely a requirement. Steps to ensure that your database is ready. So step one, we need to check and to ensure that standard reporting and the review, um, and we review the filter for the AB and AI reports. Okay, so this is a very simple way, and I'm going to show you through the uh, Reckon APS product, how we can view to see um, or check to see that the AB and AI reports have or haven't been received. Now, there are a number of ways of doing it. Obviously, the process that I'm going to show you now is going through standard reporting and making sure um, or checking to make sure that the data has been received by the, uh, from the ATO. Okay, so the normal process would be you would launch uh, APS, and you would then launch uh, the reporting. In the reporting group, we would launch standard reporting, okay? assuming you've got rights to that. So I'm going to launch that product now. So once we've launched standard reporting, you click on the selector button and you ensure that you have the tax ATO option selected first. Okay? Once that's selected, you'll see that there's a tick there on the left on the left hand side. And what we can then do is you'll notice that we have some attributes which we can filter on, and the attributes we're specifically looking at is the tax attribute, and specifically the, for example, the AB and the AI report date. Okay. One of the important things you need to realise here is this: when we are running the reports, okay, we're running an, 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 a business activity statement, an AB report, whether we're grouping it by partner, manager, or agent. There is a filter that you need to be aware of. Okay, and it's a very important filter. It is under the AB report date. If you double click, you'll be presented with a list of dates. Okay, so the format in which those dates work is it's year, month, and day. Those report dates are the dates in which the report or the data contained in that report was generated from the ATO. Okay. So it's absolutely imperative that when you do run an AB or an AI report, as well as the OM and RS reports, that you do select a report date. So you'll notice that obviously the last quarter that, um, that is relevant to us here would be December. Okay, we haven't yet completed the March quarter and obviously those activity statements for March haven't yet been generated. But certainly December has. So it's important that we do select the December dated report because that is the quarter or the data in which we would like to review. We refresh the report or rerun it and that is the data that we're presented with. 
Okay, we'll see a sort name, an ABN, a period in which the uh, uh, activity statement relates to, the document identification number, which is obviously provided to us by the ATO, and the due date. Okay. So the reason why we see multiple dates appearing in, the, in, in this particular report Okay, so when I go back to the selection criteria and I double click, the reason why there's multiple dates in there is that uh, they are the dates in which the ATO have generated the AB report in this case. Okay, so if you've got activity statements which are sent to you on a monthly basis, you'll obviously see monthly and potentially obviously quarterly uh, dates as well. Okay, so it's important that you do reference the appropriate report. Okay. So that data is obviously quite important. So obviously we know that we have received the activity statement data, um, the AB report, for the December quarter. Right? And we're now in a, in, a, in a position to be able to create those activity statements, be it in manual or in a bulk fashion. The same thing applies with the OM report. Okay, you'll notice that when you double click on the OM report, you're obviously um, presented with a list of dates. Okay. So the OM report is your activity statement summary report. Okay. So in that scenario, what we'll do is we will remove the AB date, double click on the OM report date, select the most current one, which is the 5th of December 2014, and we would then rerun that report accordingly. Okay. So the activity statement summary report, we're going to group it by agent, and there's your data. So you'll see your, your support, your sort name, name of the taxpayer, the ABN or TFN, the period in which that activity statement relates, the document identification number, the type of report that is uh, attached, and any of the various uh, items or values that appear at G21, F17, T7, and so on. Okay. Okay. So as you see, as per the slide, it shows you your um, report dates for the A, B, A, I, O, M, and R, S. Same thing applies for the O, M. It's important that when you do run those reports that you do filter on the particular date in which you would uh, like to see that report for. Okay. Step three would be to check your third party software to see if the AB and AI report has been received. So obviously if you've gone into standard reporting and you don't see uh, a report date that you would expect to see, so for example if the December quarter uh, report wasn't there, then that's, I suppose the alarm bells start to ring. What you need to be sure is that that, uh, that AB and AI report hasn't been received by your third party vendor software that you might use to lodge with the ATO. And that's important, okay? So um, if that's the case that you have received uh, the data, then that's fine and it's ended up in the appropriate software application, perfect. If on the other hand you haven't received the data and you can't see it in any of the reports, then you need to contact the ATO immediately. Okay. The AB and AI reports are ones which essentially cannot be reissued by the ATO. All right, so it's important that if you are using two different software applications that you do review um, and have a very close look at using the primary and the secondary gateway which I covered in session one uh, earlier today. Okay. It's a very, very important step. If you're unsure about how that's to be done, then my suggestion is that you get in touch with the Reckon um, support team. And they can assist you with the primary and secondary gateway details. In turn, if you're having issues with your third party software, then you would need to contact that, that product vendor and determine how to make those relevant changes to the system. Okay, step four in terms of uh, ensuring that your database is ready is that you request the activity statement client list. Okay, so what we generally do on a monthly basis or a number of days prior to receiving um, the AB and AI report, the suggestions made that you request your client activity statement uh, lodgement list, client list, which is an AS report. Okay. 
And the reason for that is it allows you to go through the activity statement client list and review all the clients that appear in the report. So you'll see TFN and ABN, you'll see the client name, you'll see the sort name, the postal address, whether the client's registered for GST or not, and the method in which the client receives their activity statement. And that is in, in electronic form, an internet form, or a paper form. The whole idea is to request the AS report approximately four days or prior to the ATO generate date. And the whole idea is that, that you will have sufficient time to go through that report and make any relevant changes that you need to make prior to the ATO generating the AB and AI reports. So for example, if you find that there's a number of clients that have switched from a paper form to an electronic form, that's the opportunity to, to take to lodge a CU form and get that change back to paper. Okay? Uh, and the whole idea is, is to get this report you know, as close as you can to the generate date, but obviously allowing 24 to 48 hours for that report then to come back and then allowing it sufficient time for the practice to go through and make the relevant changes they need to make. Okay, so we would suggest that you lodge the, uh, the request for the AS report approximately four days prior to the ATO generate date and then lodge another um, activity statement uh, client list two days prior to the ATO date to check to make sure that those changes have gone through. Okay? And that's a good process to adopt. It basically ensures that when you do receive your AB and AI report, they are the most accurate that you can possibly, that they, it could possibly be. Because quite frankly, there's no point making those changes after you've, you've received the AB and AI report because you won't see the benefit of those until the following month or following quarter. Okay? So the earlier those changes are made, the better. Okay, as we covered in session one, I'm going to talk about obviously when, when you would likely to expect uh, to receive the AB and AI reports from the ATO, whether they're, whether they're in AB or AI format, that is ELS, whether they are in an internet format, being the portal, or whether they are in paper format, you would expect the data to be sent or the task to be completed by the ATO uh, within seven days from the planned generate date. Okay? So if you're unsure of when the generate dates are, they are available obviously on the screen as well as on the ATO website. Uh, and there's no, there's, those dates are pretty much set in advance, so it's unlikely that those dates would change. Okay. Again, you would need to um, obviously refer back to the ATO website for any additional uh, for the following uh, financial year. So that's obviously the same list by month, um, and you've got your plan generate dates for your monthly activity statement data. The legislative due date, however, is um, open to interpretation. That does not include the uh, additional time that our electronic agents have. Any questions before I move on to the next section around process? Okay, no questions? All right, process and the creation of activity statements. So the activity statement creation process is as follows. The activity statement reports are received from the ATO as per the ATO generate date. Okay, so whether you're receiving those electronically in print form. The report data is then, if it's received in an electronic form, the report data is imported into the Reckon APS database and matched via the TFN and ABN automatically. Okay, so obviously the AB and AI reports contain the client's TFN and ABN. That is the unique identifier that we use to match the ATO's report data back to what is in the Reckon APS database. And that is the only um, uh, uniquely identifiable field that we could use. Okay? What then occurs is you have the ability then, once that data is received, to create your activity statements, either in a manual uh, fashion, that is one by one, or in a bulk fashion, and that is you can create them all in bulk in one, in one process. The activity statement creation process in a manual form. Okay, so that obviously hasn't changed. You would launch the APS Tax Manager module and select the appropriate client. You would create the activity statement 
okay, based on the relevant period and year and ensure that you select obviously the appropriate year based matter uh, for that particular form. Once the form is created, okay, if there's a match with the, that particular client uh, from a TFN or an ABN perspective, then once the form's created, we will populate that form with the document identification number, the DIN. The due date will also populate Tax Manager because that will come through uh, in the data as well, as well as items G21, F17, T7, T2 and T5. Okay, so they will populate the form. Now if you have issues where the data doesn't populate, so you've gone and created your activity statement, um, expecting the data to populate. If it doesn't populate, then generally the reason for that, generally, is that there is no TFN or ABN match. Okay, so we couldn't find, um, we couldn't match the data we received from the ATO uh, properly using a TFN or an ABN. Okay, and it could be that your TFN doesn't, doesn't exist, your ABN doesn't exist, or it's invalid. Okay, and that relates back to session one today about how to determine which clients don't have a valid uh, or a valid TFN or ABN. The bulk creation process, however, is a little different. Okay? The requirement here is, is that you must have the tax release 2014.4 installed as an absolute minimum. Okay? So that does need to be installed and obviously users will require a certain Joe rights to be turned on. That is the ability to create returns and they'll also have, need to have the ability to run the bulk creation routine. So I'm going to show you that now. So when I launch uh, Joe Admin, okay, and I've selected the um, the super user group in this particular example, you'll notice under tax management um, you have a couple of options. One of the options that you need to make sure that you have turned on is the import activity statement. Okay, so in this case I've got allow access turned on. If you don't have this particular Joe Wright setting turned on, then you will not see the menu to be able to bulk create your activity statements in Tax Manager. Okay. If you have any queries around setting this up and making sure that users have, or the appropriate users have rights, you need to follow your user guide. The release notes in 2014.4.0 will contain that information. Okay. So if I launch Tax Manager now and show you how we create the bulk uh, activity statements. So obviously, as we saw earlier, we received the December dated report from the ATO, which means we do have the AB and AI reports for the December quarter. So what we're going to do is from the action button inside Tax Manager, okay, we're going to click on the action button and select import activity statements from the ATO. Okay. Once we've selected that option, we'll have a window appear on the screen, and I'll try and maximise that as much as I can, which is the import activity statements. Okay, so whether you are an elite tax user or whether you're an advanced tax user, you can use this option. Okay? The first question we need to answer is the system would like to know which period end do we want to create the activity statements for. So I click on the drop down selection, and in this case I'm going to select December. The next response to this is which particular financial year do you wish to create, or calendar year, do you wish to create these activity statements for? And these are going to be for the December 2014 quarter, okay, or month. I now click on the Find button, okay, and I'm presented with two options. So the system that has told me that for this particular practice or agent, it has received both the business activity uh, statement report, which is the AB report, as well as the AI report for instalment activity statements. Okay, and it was received on the 15th of December. So that's fine. What I do now is I select the business activity statement, because that is the one in which I want to create or bulk create my activity statements for, and I click on the OK button. What I'm presented now is the ability where the system will go through and actually um, show me. Um, the first option obviously is I need to select the appropriate matter in which those activity statements will be created against. Okay. Now for those practices that are using one matter for all the activity statements, uh, obviously then you, you'll have the option of selecting one matter. 
There may be some practices, depending on your configuration, where you may have multiple matters that you might select or create activity statements against. In this particular example, if you did have uh, more than one matter, uh, this area here would contain another drop-down selection box where you could create or select, sorry, another matter. Okay. The button down the bottom here suggests that I wish to create the activity statements if the system is able to. Okay, so what the system will do is once I've selected the standard matter, it will display all the activity or all the clients in which it is able to create an activity statement for. So you'll see there that I've got a number of companies in that list. And there are now some of the things you need to be aware of here as well is there are a number of reasons why activity statements may or may not be created automatically by the system. If you don't have an ABN match, okay, you will you will basically see a category saying that um, you know it'll basically say no ABN or division number matched. Okay, and in that case, the system could not match an ABN or a division number um, of data that it's received from the ATO. It couldn't match that back to a client in your practice management database. Some of the other reasons where you may not have a match is where, for example, a matter doesn't exist. All right, so for whatever reason, uh, you've selected a matter. If the matter that you've selected as a default matter is not attached to the client, then obviously the system will come up with a, a category called matter does not exist, and those clients will sit in that category, which means that, well, I can't create an activity statement because the matter in which I wish to create it against does not exist against that client. All right, so there are a number of reasons why um, uh, they may not appear uh, or, or they may not create. Obviously, the next step here, um, once I've gone through and, and selected the appropriate uh, clients uh, in which they are, are ready to be created, is the statements to be created. So there's three statements this, this particular system, uh, or in this particular scenario, the system will create. And the next step will be to click on the Create button. Okay, and the system will go away and create the activity statements and they will appear in the Tax Manager console, okay, ready for you to open uh, the activity statement and view the data that's been populated from the Australian Taxation Office AB and AI uh, reports. Okay. Any questions on that before I move into reporting? So obviously the benefits around bulk creation is where the agent is responsible for essentially preparing and lodging um, uh, activity statements and those, and those particular practices that are doing the vast majority of the clients, preparing activity statements for the vast majority of the clients will find some massive benefits here because the ability to bulk create those activity statements will save you an inordinate amount of time. And remembering that the AB and II, AI reports will contain the data, only the data or the activity statement data for those clients in which you are lodging electronically. Okay, so it will not contain the data for those clients in which you're receiving a paper-based activity statement. Okay, there's no questions. I'm going to move on to reporting ATO. So which ATO report should I use? And Obviously, we need to be clear on what information you, uh, is actually contained on the ATO reports so that you're aware of which reports I need to use for what purpose. So the activity statement client list, known as the AS report, contains details of the activity statements attached to the registered agent. It contains, or the report itself contains, the ABN and TFN. It also contains the taxpayer name, the postal address, the GST registered, that is whether the client is registered for GST, yes or no, and how the activity statements are being received, internet, electronic or paper. The activity statement lodgement report, the OL report, and that's what the ATO know, know them as, the lodgement status of your client's activity statements for the previous six months. Okay, so this report contains the ABN and TFN, the taxpayer name, the frequency in which this particular client is um, due to lodge their statements, whether it be monthly or quarterly, what their cycle is, and obviously what the lodgement status is. So if you've got a client, and because it's showing you the last six months, if you've got a client that is due or expected to lodge their 
activity statements on a monthly basis, the system will actually show you the last six months, whether they've been lodged, not lodged or not required. And the last, obviously the previous six months will be determined based on when you request that report okay, or receive that report. The activity statement summary report, which is the OM report, lists all of the activity statements issued to clients, be it in a paper or an ELS format. It contains the taxpayer name, the ABN, the TFN, the period of the activity statement, whether it be monthly or quarterly, the document identification number, the type of activity statement, the due date, and obviously the data that would normally appear on a pre-printed document, that is a G21, T7 and so on. Now, when the um, when the activity statements are created, and I'm going to be I'm going to stand corrected on this one. My understanding is that they are created with the status of rolled over. Okay, I will double check that one. But we've had a question around when the bulk activity statements are created. What's the tax status given to them? My understanding is that it's uh, that it is rolled over. Okay, but we'll uh, confirm that for you. The outgoing business activity statement. This is these two are the, are the most critical ones. Okay, um, the information received for all all those marked as electronic um, on the activity statement client list. Okay, so all those that would normally appear on your activity statement client list. So your AES report essentially contains all clients irrespective of how you're expected to um, lodge the documents, whether it be paper, internet or electronic. The activity statement um, or the AB, the outgoing business activity statement report, the AB report only contains those marked as electronic. That's why there is a difference between that report, the AB and the AS. This contains the same information as the OM report with the exception that only clients marked with the receipt method set to electronic appear on the report. The report, the data contained in this report is used to populate your activity statement in Tax Manager. Hence the reason why the AB report is critically important that your practice receives it. Because that is what we use to create or populate your activity statement data. Okay. So if you didn't receive your activity statement for um, uh, activity statement uh, report outgoing, the AB report for a particular quarter, that essentially means a lot of work for the practice. The outgoing instalment activity statement uh, report, the AI report, is exactly the same as the AB with the exception that um, it contains your instalment activity statement clients and obviously um, it's only those clients marked as electronic on your activity statement client list. Okay? So hence why the, the, the data in the AI and AB report is different from what is in the AS report. Any questions on that section? Okay, I shall move along. Reporting and standard reporting. So how do I view my reports? Okay, which I sort of covered a little bit earlier. So obviously you need to select, in order to view the AB report, it's, you need to launch standard reporting and have access to the standard reporting module. So you need to click on the selector and select tax ATO. Third option is you need to click, and which is an important option, you need to click on the filter and filter for the AB report date. Now option three or selection three is something you must remember to do. Okay, You must select the appropriate report date. So an example would be because we're, we've just been looking at the December quarter activity statements, we would select the report dated December. If we wanted to look at the data that we received from the ATO around the September quarter activity statements, we would select the report dated September. If you don't select a date, then what you will receive is an all-encompassing report with data potentially going back quite a number of years. Okay. And you may also see that there, there could be some clients that you know potentially were a client 12 to 24 months ago, no longer a client now. If you don't select the date, those clients that are no longer will appear in your um, AB report, okay, your business activity statement report, because at the time, be it 12 months ago, the ATO uh, know them uh, as being your client. They may not be a client today, but they were 12 months ago. So it's important that you do select that date. 
you would then select reports, tax ATO, and then select the business activity statement, AB, summary report. And then you could group it by your preference. You can group it by agent, partner, or manager. Just be careful with your filters in this particular report and make sure that you get them right. If you get the filters wrong, then you could potentially be excluding data. And by excluding data, I mean, yes, we might have received 100 clients from the ATO, but because you've run this report with certain filters, you may only see 80 of them. Okay? The other 20 is still in the database, but your filters have excluded that data from the report. The AI report works in exactly the same fashion. Okay, so you obviously you need to write the standard reporting module. You would click on the selector, select tax ATO. Um, again, you have the ability to select a date. Okay, and I'm not going to um, um, go through the date again, but obviously you understand the importance of that date selection now. You would then select reports, tax ATO, installment activity uh, statement summary, and then group by your appropriate preference. Okay, be it agent, partner, or manager. How to view the AS report. So again, this is one that you'd want to request on a regular basis, and I'm going to suggest monthly, and obviously a certain number of days prior to the ATO generate date. Okay, so that report, once it's received from the ATO, and it's generally 24 to 48 hours after the request has been made, generally, that's also available from the standard reporting module. You need to click on selector, uh, ensure that tax ATO is selected. This does not have a date. Okay, the system will automatically select the most current or the most recent report. Okay, so you'd select reports, tax ATO, activity statement, client list, and then you could group by preference. Now this report, when it's generated, does have a report date in the top right hand corner. And that report date is essentially the data contained in that report is accurate and up to date as of the date of the report. Okay? It's essentially that date is the run date in which the ATO generated the data that appears on that report. So if it's a week old, um, you know, there, there, there could well have been changes after that report was received. The OL report works in exactly the same fashion. Okay? Um, and obviously the OL report has no date filter, but again, standard reporting, select the ATO, and that's an important one as well, otherwise the report selection becomes disabled. Reports, tax ATO, activity statement, lodgement report, OL, and you group by agent, partner, or manager. Okay. The OM report is obviously another one. Again, standard reporting, selector uh, equals tax ATO. The selection, obviously you can filter your OM report by date, <coughs> which you would, and you would select the activity statement summary report, OM, and you group by your appropriate preference, be, being uh, agent, partner, or manager. Okay. Now we've had a number of queries around the tax agent ATO portal report. So, all the reports that we've shown you to date, all of these reports are available from the tax agent portal. Okay? Um, so these can be requested from the, uh, from the ATO portal and obviously they will be also then be delivered inside the ATO portal. Now the difference or the, the thing you need to be aware of is if you request these reports through the tax agent portal, they can only be viewed inside the ATO portal and we cannot import that data into, Reckon, into the Reckon APS database. The reports are, the data is the same, but it's presented in a different format to what it would normally be presented if it was received by ELS. Okay? So that means that we cannot match, do any matching of that data back to the data or um, in the information that is contained inside the Reckon APS database. Oh, so you can't filter that report by partner or manager or any other attribute. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so I've had a question around um, some of the filters or attributes that you can use within those reports and what's available. Obviously, you can use a number of, um, uh, there are a number of fields that you can filter on. There are also a number of attributes that we discussed in session one earlier today. 
So if you do have some attributes that you wish to include or report on or filter on, you can certainly include those in your uh, reports as well. Okay. Reporting and BPA. So for those clients who are using or that have um, that have been using the BPA module, there are some reports that you can run once the AB and AI reports are received. Okay, so as you know, and we discussed earlier, once the AB and AI reports are received, they are stored inside the APS database. What that will do is if you are a BPA user, you can automatically have BPA triggered to send you an alert once the AB report has been received. So the example on screen here is that we could send an email to the matter manager advising them of the, um, the, the particular clients that have been received in the current quarter, for example, the due date that's been provided to us by the ATO, as well as the, when the payment date might be, um, might be due. Okay, so basically you can send a, this is just an example of one, but certainly once that data is received by, uh, by the ATO and stored into the database, we can trigger off certain alerts within BPA to advise the appropriate staff internally that the data's been received and, uh, and that it may be ready to go and you can start work. What other type of things can BPA do? Obviously BPA can run, runs in background and it can perform a number of functions. Okay, some of those functions are as follows. Database integrity checks. Okay, so at the moment if you're doing those manually using Taxstar Investigator, you can use BPA to automatically look at the database and report duplicate TFN or ABNs. Invalid TFN or ABNs and missing invalid, uh, in, sorry, missing TFN or ABNs. Okay, as well as, um, it can also interrogate the AB and AI reports and report on those clients where there is no match okay, to any client in the RIC and APS database. So that's also useful as well. So it saves you the hassle of going through and determining who they are. The moment those AB and AI reports are received, BPA can trigger off an alert and say, hey, of the 100 I received, 20 of them I can't match. And, and that report can go to the relevant person internally to act upon. We can also update attributes based on certain business rules. Okay, so we know that from some of the reports we can, we can get from the ATO, things like the method of uh, receipt, okay, so whether the activity statement is received in paper, electronic or internet, we can update certain attributes on the database with that information once we receive it. We can also send links to Practice IQ reports for those users who are using Practice IQ version 9.2 or above. All right? So the moment some reports are received, um, we can trigger off some, some um, uh, additional reporting to be uh, prepared and sent. We can also notify changes in the activity statement method of receipt. Okay, so for example, if a client has moved from paper to electronic from one month to the next or one quarter to the next, we can get BPA to look at that data and say, hey, in, in this particular quarter, we've got 10 clients that have moved from one method to another. Okay, and they're the, the where's because obviously then staff won't expect um, the delivery of the activity statement to be in a different format. Due lodgement reports as well. So the due lodgement reports can list the various uh, uh, documents or forms that are due within the next X amount of days. So if you've got a whole pile of activity statements that are due in the next you know, 14 days, we can trigger a BPA alert to say these are the uh, activity statements, they're due in the next 14 days, their status is currently you know, rolled over, not started essentially. Report on activity statements where the client is responsible for lodgement and it's not lodged. So we can actually trigger a BPA alert for those clients who are preparing their own activity statements. Okay, obviously we would know when the due date for those are and we can get to BPA to automatically send an email to the client as well as um, CC the matter manager or matter partner and just send the client a reminder directly to say, look, your activity statement is due on the on the 15th of March, um, you know, we note that it hasn't yet been lodged, just a, re just a friendly reminder, um, just to let you know that it hasn't yet been lodged. Okay, so that's automating processes and tasks that would normally be done manually. Any questions on BPA and its capabilities and what it can do for you? Okay, hints, tips and traps is the final section. 
So obviously, as I mentioned in session one today, you need to think very carefully about the method of lodgement, okay? especially common in the case of amendments. So as I mentioned in session one today, it is very, very easy when a client is receiving their paper-based activity statements and they're being sent directly to their home address or business address, the client picks up the phone and says, look, Mr. Accountant, I've made a mistake on my previous activity statement. We, you know, I need to lodge an, an amendment. I don't know where to start. The agent's more than happy to oblige. And the easiest way for the agent to oblige in those instances is just log on the portal, make the ad adjustment, and lodge it. Okay? The problem with that is, is it's just gone and created a bit of an issue because now the client will no longer receive their, their activity statements in paper form. Okay? They'll now come through the tax agent portal. So that's something you need to be really careful of. Okay, it's it's terribly important that you do uh, be aware of those because it, it is becoming a little bit more difficult to change clients from one method receipt method to another. Dealing with the no database reference found messages appearing in reports. So generally speaking, there is a number of reasons why that is an invalid missing uh, ABN or TFN. Um, it could also be things like matter partner, matter manager doesn't exist, or the agent hasn't been selected okay, against the particular client. So they're things that you need to look, look for. Otherwise, your reporting just becomes convoluted with no database reference found messages. The ATO activity statement generate date. So familiarise yourself with those. It is pretty common for clients wanting to know when their activity statements are going to be received, okay, when they're going to get them. You know, I've allocated a couple of days to do my activity statement. Mr. Accountant, when do you expect them to, to, to come through? So obviously that is, as I mentioned earlier, that is generally seven days from the generate date. Okay, so within inside seven days should be the time frame in which the ATO will have completed that process. Okay, and that is a guideline that they've produced that they are running towards. The other thing is division numbers are now being utilised by the ATO. So when you've got an ABN, okay, you've got um, division numbers being used, so 001, 002 and so on. So that is something you'll also need to be aware of. Okay, so that is something we're also putting together a solution for and we'll assist you uh, as time uh, goes on. ELS lodgements using multiple applications, so obviously those clients that are using Reckon APS to do tax lodgements as well as a third party vendor to lodge other tax returns with the ATO. This is an area that you need to pay careful consideration and this is a common issue amongst those uh, clients who are using third party vendors to lodge. Our recommendation is as follows. If the Reckon APS product is your primary product for lodging tax returns and activity statements, you should be using the primary gateway for tax manager. Okay. If on the other hand your, your third party vendor product is only used for lodging specific form types, then my suggestion is that you set that up using your secondary gateway. Okay. And what that will do is the primary gateway is the only gateway where the ATO will make available your AB and AI reports. Okay. So it's impossible then for the AB and AI reports to be downloaded by your third party application if it's set up correctly. Okay. So that's a very, very important point because the AB and AI reports, once they're sent by the ATO, they cannot be resent. Okay. Problem resolution. Um, we've come across some issues with some agents that we've picked up uh, along the way. And these are some of the most common ones that we've seen. Uh, clients missing from the ATO reports. Okay, so I've seen the examples where the activity statements client list, the AS report, should have all your clients on it. Some agents have, uh, have sort of complained saying that there are a number of clients missing off that report. In that scenario, you'll need to contact the ATO. Um, other agents have been complaining about the lodged or not lodged status being incorrect. Okay, so they've asked for a lodgement program and they've looked at their activity statements and, and, and they know for sure they've lodged the activity statements for various clients even though the report says not lodged. Any other discrepancies? Again, we all we do from our perspective is we retrieve the data from, from the ATO. The reports themselves and the contents of such aren't generated by the ATO. Okay. So um, it's important that you do keep that in mind and that you do contact the ATO as soon as possible. Okay. 
Um, and you're more than welcome to log a support call with the REC and APS support teams. However, there's not a heck of a lot we can do in those circumstances. Okay? At the end of the day, we only receive or download the data in which the ATO have generated. Now, I've got a question around um, secondary gateway and using that in another software. The way it works is if you lodge a tax return using your primary gateway, the validation report becomes available only to the primary gateway. Okay, if you were to lodge a super fund, for example, using your secondary gateway and your third party vendor, then the validation report will only become available to the secondary gateway, which is your third party application. All right, the two never get mixed up. Okay, because you're physically, essentially what you're doing is the secondary gateway is, means you're lodging through another ATO office. Okay. Um, so that covers the um, ATO problem resolution issues. Requesting the ATO reports, always check uh, if you are receiving these reports on a regular basis. Okay, so please make sure that you are receiving all the reports that you should be receiving on a regular basis. If suddenly something changes and things suddenly are no longer being received, you need to get in touch with the ATO as soon as possible. Okay, if, um, if you're unsure, as I've said, contact the ATO as our ad hoc report requests can actually turn um, these reports on and off. So the most common one that I've seen is the OL and OM reports. You can request them if you wanted to in between the time frames when the ATO would normally send them. So the OL, OM reports would normally be received week three of every month. Some clients have said, well, gee, I wouldn't mind seeing it week one of every month as well. The unfortunate thing is by manually requesting those reports, you can actually be telling the ATO that yes, I want the report, but this is the last time I ever want it, and they will send you the report and you won't get any, any additional reports thereafter. So if that's the case, then you need to ring, um, call the ATO and just find out, um, provide them with your agent number, and they can look at the database and see whether you are currently turned on or turned off for receiving those reports. It's unfortunate, but uh, requesting those reports actually tells the ATO that you want to turn the switch on or turn the switch off. And the problem is you don't know at what status it's currently at. The AS reports should be requested approximately seven days before the ATO generate date. Okay, give it a couple of days from there to receive the data. So that'll give you five days in which to go through the, the uh, report and make sure that you lodge any CU forms prior to the generate date for any changes. Okay, so that ought to be a process that you should consider implementing in, uh, within the practice. Okay, it's a very, very important point that I would much prefer that you keep that um, uh, activity statement client list up to date as often as you possibly can, rather than doing it on an ad hoc basis. Okay. So in summary, we've spoken about the ATO activity statement reports. Um, giving you a bit of an understanding as to what reports are received from the ATO, when the reports are received uh, or sent by the ATO, and how and when to request these on a regular basis. Okay? Obviously we've spoken about the creation of activity statement, be it in bulk or in manual form. Okay? And keeping a reminder, make sure that you remember that the AB and AI reports, which is what we use to create the activity statements in bulk, only um, that, only, that report only contains those clients where you are lodging those activity statements in an electronic form by ELS. Okay, so if you've got clients in a paper or a portal, they won't be included on the AB and AI report, which means we, or tax manager, will not create an activity statement for them, which makes sense. We don't want to, okay, because we don't have the data either. That concludes our session today. I'm now open um, for the last five minutes of the session to any questions that the audience may have. Hi, Anthony. It's Tanya here. I know it's a lot to take. Tanya, how are you going? Good, thank you. We just had a request from, from someone to be able to reconfirm where it is that they do their agent request reports. Would you mind just showing us where you request those sure. RRs? Thanks. Absolutely. So as long as you've got access to the system administration consoles area, okay, the, uh, the section that you need to uh, double click on is the tax agents module. So if we launch the tax agents module, we would select the agent forms option. Okay, on the left hand side, we would select 2014 and we would click on the action button and we would create an RR form. Okay. And in here is where you would select your activity statement client list. 
So we would come in here and, and basically click on um, request the following report. We would select activity statement client list and we would then click on the add button at the bottom. So that what that does is it generates the request for the activity statement client list. Once that passes, as soon as you click on the add button, it'll go through a validation process to make sure that it's A-OK. -okay. That request will then appear in your batch processing area. Okay, so um, it's important that if the person generating the AES or the activity statement client list request is not the person doing the lodgements, you need to make sure that you let the person doing the lodgements know that there is a request in there called an AES request that they need to lodge. Okay, because otherwise that, that request will sit there for days and weeks on end and it's not going to go anywhere because someone's going to be going through the physical tax return saying, I'm lodging these three today and that's all there is to lodge, even though there might be a request there sitting for an AES. All right, so it's very, very important that you do um, select, and, and obviously I've got a, a dummy tax agent number so I won't accept it, but it's very important that you do let the person who is responsible for doing the lodgements know that they are to lodge that request. The other thing to keep in mind is you cannot have two requests for this same report outstanding. So if you requested one today, um, you cannot request another one tomorrow until the previous or the initial request has been fulfilled. So fulfilled means, okay, the ATO have generated the report, they've dropped it into your ELS mailbox, you can then request another one. Any other questions? Well, I might sort of cover off on some things as well. So CU forms, when you're changing a client from one method of receipt to another, um, if they're changing from, let's say, paper to uh, ELS, electronic, then I would suggest that you do that potentially through the uh, tax manager product and lodge it as the CU form. If you're changing them from paper or electronic to portal, which is internet, I would lodge that CU form through the tax agent portal. Okay. Now, the amount of times I've had this question asked, asked of me quite a few times is how many times would the ATO change the method of receipt on an activity statement? The answer is I don't know and they're not willing to tell. So um, I don't know how many times you'll be able to go from electronic back to paper, from, you know, from electronic back to paper. I don't know how many times they will do that. So that's something also you need to keep in mind. So any other questions? Okay, so the, I'll stay online. For the benefit of those that have attended the session that have no further questions, thank you very much for your uh, participation today. Much appreciated. Hopefully you... Um, you got uh, something out of today's session and you can uh, bring that back into the practice and implement some, some of these things that I've shown you today. For any other um, uh, attendee that has any other questions, more than happy to stay on the line for a few more minutes and answer those.